Well, hello everybody. Tim Kreitz here, Tim Kreitz Adventures. Today, Britt and I are out in the Badlands of West Texas. We're going out to a town called Piote to look at an old bomber base, or as much as we can look at of it. It's mostly on restricted government land, but there is a museum out there, and the old entrance is accessible. It was a training base for replacement crews on B-17s and B-29s in World War II, and then was later used as a place to mothball old airplanes. And Britt needs to eat. So when did they close off access to it out there? Because when you were a kid growing up out here... Yeah, when I was a teenager, we always went out there. And it was open. So, you know, the gate, I mean, the fence was there. They were a gate on that. And when you drove in. Yeah. Was it restricted at all? Not at all. And there was a lot more out there. They tore a lot of it down. Right. Up all until... The little, there was all the little buildings that ran along the length of the of the main runway, they had the little post office, and, you know, it was like a little town out there. All those tiny little buildings were there, the post office, all the little mailboxes were still there. It was really cool. Right. Yeah, I think until the, up until the 70s and the 80s, that's when it was, they had stopped using it to store bombers by the mid-60s, oh, yeah. and then through the mid-70s to mid-80s, it just laid in ruins. All those, all those hangars that are gone now, and they used that main hangar in the movie Fandango. Yep. It was Pecos Parachute School in the movie. Mm -hmm. But it was actually that main hangar. And then not long after that is when, I don't know if they decided to tear it down or whatever, University Lands still owns it. They, you know, and... Just the roof? Yeah, you can cave in, cave in. Okay. Yeah. So they decided to just tear it all down, tear yeah, it Yeah, they left the two side walls. The superstructure. Around, yeah, around there. So they use that base to train replacement crews for first B-17s, then later B-29s. That the Enola Gay was actually stayed out Enola Gay was mothballed out there. Yep. And then it was re-upped to go wherever it went, National Air and Space Museum, and now it's at the Smithsonian where it went, underwent like a huge restoration. But it was out here for years, right out here in the middle of the desert, just 15 miles down the road. Yep. Not a lot of people know that. We are looking for the Rattlesnake Air Base Museum, which is here in town. This is downtown Pyote, by the way. <laughs> Drink it in, folks! So here is the museum. And it looks to be very, very closed. This place looks like it's locked up tighter than a $2 bill, son. Huh. Hmm. Closed. Will be moved to another location later. Damn it! I built something that looks like a gun. Let's put it <laughs> This is what happens when you're in West Texas and there's too much oil field pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you live in Pio, you got time on your hands. Boy, I'll tell you what, in a lot of ways, Piot itself is becoming a ghost town. We always take you to these ghost towns where everyone has left and there's just the decay and ruins of what's left behind. This place appears to be in that transition between a place where people live and work and have lives and families and to a place that's just dying away. It's interesting considering how fast the population of the United States is growing. It 
punctuates the fact that everyone's moving into urban centers. People aren't living rural lives the way they used to. That's a bit sad. It's very sad, as far as I'm concerned. Rural life and small town life defined America for generations. Up here on the left is the last remains of what the average person can get to from the bomber base. This was the old entrance to the base right here. These light posts been here since the 40s. Pretty neat place. And of course back in the 40s the interstate didn't exist so that was the interest trade across into the bomber base area. Wow. That's, that's the, all that's left of the main hangar right there, the superstructure, way the hell over there. And I think you're right, if we take that feeder road and then go up where the old state school used to be, we might be able to get a little bit closer. You know, this really pisses me off. We, our tax dollars, our parents' tax dollars, our grandparents' tax dollars, built and paid for all this, and now we can't even have access to it. Once again, another place that we really couldn't get into the way we wanted to. But to me, very interesting nonetheless. Lots of history. Imagine everything that went on out there and now people pass by and they don't even know about it. They don't even think about it. But you know, there's history is still alive out there. It's important to remember these things to me. I hope, I hope some of you guys agree with that. Now, we're going to go to the Piot Cemetery because a lot of Brits' ancestors are buried there. It's this old cemetery. It's probably close to 150 years old and we're just going to check it out before we head home. Nice. Hey this one's your granddad right? Hubert, Hubert Britton Parker. That's your granddad? Yep. Died in April 43, it says. Yeah, my dad was in England training for the D-Day invasion. And they wouldn't let him come home. For the funeral. For the funeral because it was so secretive. You know, they were afraid. They wouldn't let anybody, once they got them in England and got them on base and got them trained, they wouldn't even let anybody leave. Yeah. Because they, they couldn't afford to have something spill about the invasion. Yeah, they didn't need a leak about the D-Day invasion. Uh, Gosh. And a few months later, about a year later, after all that training, your dad was storming the beach at Normandy.
Yeah, she is the exact epitome of what you'd expect someone who lived in that time to, to uh, look like. Girl, she look, she looks like she would whip your ass, girl, son. Brother, you know it. <laughs> she done took a switch to us some, some youngins many a time. Yeah. Rest in peace, Rebecca Adams. <laughs> It did get hot. We need to get moving. Gosh dang, I bet it's 80 degrees out here and I'm wearing this first gear jacket. Real smart! Oh my gosh, that feels so much better to be moving. It's hot out here. I had no idea it was going to be this hot today. I way overdressed. Heading home. It's Valentine's Day. I got to take my wife out and celebrate. Then please her sexually. <laughs> See you next time.